There's a sort of a philosophic concept that a sufficiently advanced civilization will be able to create a, so, a simulation. simulation. Maybe we're in the simulation. Have you thought about this? And a lot. Have you ever seen yourself through the eyes of someone else that you have become and looked at yourself through the eyes of the ultimate observer? Who are we? Where do we come from? And what is our purpose in life? In a world full of endless possibilities, why do we keep creating the same realities? Isn't it amazing that we have so many options and potentials that exist and yet we are unaware of them? Is it possible that we are so conditioned to our daily routines and the way we create our lives that we buy the idea that we have no control at all? We have been conditioned to believe that the external world is more real than the eternal world. This new way of looking at science is just the opposite. It says that what's happening within us will create what's happening outside of us. Consciousness creates reality. This statement has changed the scientific, medical landscape, and alternative media outlets around the world. Countless scientists study this idea and how it might be correlated with the nature of our reality. It raises the question, what is consciousness? Consciousness includes a number of things. It's how we perceive our world. It's our thoughts and intentions. It's being aware and so much more. Looking for consciousness in the brain is like looking for the radio announcer. The notion that consciousness creates reality raises so many questions. Does this mean we as individuals, and on a collective level, as one human race, can shape and create whatever reality we'd like for ourselves? Does it mean we can manifest a certain lifestyle and attract certain experiences? Does it happen instantly, or does it take time? And how do we do it? We know so little still, although we might be able to answer these questions with scientific certainty. We do know that yes, a correlation between consciousness and our physical material world does indeed exist in some way. The extent of that correlation is still poorly understood. But we know it's there, and we know that it must have some sort of significance. Asking yourself these deeper questions opens up new ways of being in the world. The real trick to life is not to be in the know, but to be in the mystery. I regard consciousness as fundamental. I regard matter as derivative from consciousness. We cannot get behind consciousness. Everything that we talk about, everything that we regard as existing, postulates consciousness. According to R.C. Henry, a professor of physics and astronomy at Johns Hopkins University, in a 2005 essay, a fundamental conclusion of the new physics also acknowledges that the observer creates the reality. As observers, we are personally involved with the creation of our reality. Physicists are being forced to admit that the universe is a mental construction. Pioneering physicist Sir James Jeans wrote, The stream of knowledge is headed toward a non-mechanical reality. The universe begins to look more like a great thought than like a great machine. The mind no longer appears to be an accidental intruder into the realm of matter. We ought rather to hail it as the creator and governor of the realm of matter. Get over it and accept it. The inarguable conclusion. The universe is immaterial, mental and spiritual. The science behind the statement, consciousness creates reality. The quantum double slit experiment is one way we can see how consciousness affects the physical material world. One potential revelation of this experience is that the observer creates the reality. In this experiment, scientists use a double slit optical system to test the possible role of consciousness in the collapse of the quantum wave function. 
they had predicted that the ratio of the interference patterns, double slit, spectral power, to its single slit, spectral power, would decrease when attention was focused towards the double slit as compared to away from it, yet found that factors associated with consciousness significantly correlated in predicted ways with perturbations in the double slit interference pattern. In other words, scientists affected the results of the experiment simply by observing it. Observation not only disturbs what has to be measured, they produce it. We compel the electron to assume a definite position. We ourselves produce the results of the experiment. Although this is one of the most popular experiments, used to posit the connection between consciousness and physical reality, there are several other studies that clearly shows that consciousness or factors that are associated with consciousness directly affect our reality. A number of experiments in the field of parapsychology have also demonstrated this. Sure, we might not understand the extent of this connection, and in most cases, scientists can't even explain it. However, they are and have been observed time and time again. How can we incorporate this information into our daily lives and use consciousness to transform the world? Change requires action, but the place within ourselves that we take action from makes a big difference in the outcome. Modern day science, especially quantum physics, has been catching up to ancient mysticism and concepts deeply ingrained in various cultures throughout the ancient world. One great example of this is the fact that everything is energy and nothing is solid. We are what we think. All that we are arises with our thoughts. With our thoughts, we make the world. Broadly speaking, although there are some differences, I think Buddhist philosophy and quantum mechanics can shake hands on their view of the world. We could see in these great examples the fruits of human thinking. Regardless of the admiration we feel for these great thinkers, we should not lose sight of the fact that they were human beings just as we are. A great example of quantum physics meeting ancient wisdom can be seen in the fact that Nikola Tesla was influenced by the Vedic philosophy when pondering his ideas of zero-point energy. So why is this relevant? Because new physics is finally discovering that the observer shapes the reality. The way we think and perceive things could significantly impact our lives and the world around us. No problem can be solved from the same level of consciousness that created it. If we look at the world and examine it on a collective level, what do we see? How do we perceive it? Right now the masses believe a normal life means going to school, paying bills, raising a family, and finding a job within the current paradigm to support yourself. Many people on the planet are not resonating with this experience. However, they want change. We've been repeating and perceiving our reality this way for a very long time, as if we were drones, trained to accept things the way they are, to not question what is happening in our world, and continue on with the status quo, only caring for ourselves and our own lives. As Noam Chomsky would say, our consent has been manufactured. If we continue down this path and continue to perceive and view reality as this is just the way it is, we will ensure prolong that this type of existence and experience for the human race without ever changing it. In order to create and manifest a new reality for ourselves, our thought patterns and the way we perceive reality must change. What changes the way we perceive reality? Information. When new information emerges, it changes the way we look at things. And as a result, our reality changes with it, and we begin to manifest a new experience and open our minds to a broader view of reality. What's also important about teachings from new physics is that if consciousness creates reality, that means change starts within us. 
It starts with the way in which we are observing the outer world from our inner world. Our perception of the external world might very well be a reflection of our inner world, our inner state of being. So ask yourself, are you happy? Are you observing, perceiving, and acting from a place of love? Or from a place of hate or anger? All of these factors are associated with our consciousness and observation. The one or the many who are doing the observing might significantly impact the type of physical world the human race manifests for itself. We are indeed the observers, and we can create change and break patterns to open up new possibilities all through the way in which we observe ourselves, others, and the world around us. I believe that the human race is in the process of waking up to a number of different things all at the same time, and as a result, the way we perceive and observe the world around us on a mass scale is shifting drastically. So if you want to help change the world, change the way you look at things, and the things you look at will change. It was not possible to formulate the laws of quantum mechanics in a fully consistent way without reference to consciousness.